The Indo-Iranian common noun, mitra, means that which causes tra to bind me. Hence, Sanskrit mitram, meaning a covenant, contract, or oath, the protection of which is Mitra's primary role in both the Rig Veda and in the Mitanni Treaty. Vedic Mitra is a prominent deity of the Rig Veda, distinguished by a relationship to Varuna, the protector of Rita, truth. Together with Varuna, he counted among the Aditas, a group of solar deities in later Vedic texts. The first extant record of Indic Mitra in the form of Mi It Ra is in the inscribed peace treaty of around 1400 BC between Hittites and the Hurrian kingdom of Mitanni in the area southeast of Lake Van in Asia Minor. In post-Vedic India, the noun Mitra came to be understood as friend. Although Asuras, the Rig Vedic Dvanva, pair, Mitra, Varuna, are also addressed as divas, and even Mitra alone is considered a diva. In Rig Veda 359, which is the only Rig Vedic hymn dedicated to Mitra independently from Varuna. Mitra is mentioned by name once in the Gathas in Yasna 46 5. Seventeen Avestan hymns believed to have been composed by Zoroaster himself. In Zoroastrianism, Mithra is a member of the trinity of Ahuras, protectors of Asha, Arta, Truth, or that which is right. In the colossal statuary erected by King Antiochus I, 69 until 34 BC, at Mount Nemrut, Comagnin, an ancient Armenian kingdom, in present-day eastern Turkey. Mithras is shown beardless, wearing a Phrygian style of cap, and was originally seated on a throne alongside other deities and the king himself. On the back of the thrones, there is an inscription in Greek which includes the name Apollo Mithras Helios. Some modern scholars advocate sufficient evidence exists to posit that there was a Mithras cult in Fayum, a city in Middle Egypt in the 200s BC. Mithras is depicted as being born from a rock already in his youth, with a dagger in one hand and a torch in the other, nude, standing with his legs together and wearing a Phrygian cap. Believing the Persians' descendants of the Greek hero Perseus, the Indo-Iranian name Mithra was adopted by the Greeks and Romans as Mithras, first identified with the sun god Helios by the Greeks. The syncretic Mithra Helios was transformed into the figure Mithras during the 2nd century BC, probably at Pergamon, an ancient Greek city in Aeolus, a district on the west coast of Asia Minor. This new cult was taken to Rome around the 1st century BC and was dispersed throughout the Roman Empire. Quickly growing popular among the Roman military, Mithraism spread as far north as Hadrian's Wall 
and the Germanic limes. The Greek historian Plutarch, 46 until 127 AD, says that in 67 BC, the pirates of Cilicia, a province on the southeastern coast of Asia Minor, were practicing secret rites of Mithras. Extending inland from the southeastern coast of modern Turkey, Cilicia is due north and northeast of the island of Cyprus. In Life of Pompey, 24, Plutarch writes, They likewise offered strange sacrifices, those of Olympus, I mean, and they celebrated certain secret mysteries, among which those of Mithras continue to this day, being originally instituted by them. He mentions that the pirates were especially active during the Mithridatic Wars from 88 until 63 BC between the Roman Republic and King Mithridates the sixth of Pontus, in which the pirates supported the king. The 300s AD commentary on Virgil by Servius says that Pompey, 106 to 48 BC, settled some of these pirates in Calabria in southern Italy, known in antiquity as Brutium. The Greek historian Dio Cassius, 155 until 235 AD, tells how the name Mithras arose during a 66 AD state visit to Rome by Tiridates, first of Armenia, the son of Venones, second of Parthia, a historical region located in modern-day northeastern Iran, to make peace between Parthia and Rome, and be coronated the new king of Parthia, by the last Julio-Claudian Emperor, Nero Caesar, 37 until 68 AD. Dio Cassius writes that Tiridates, as he was about to receive his crown, told the Roman Emperor that he revered him as Mithras. Not very long after this doubtlessly controversial event came the release of the Thebaid. Around 800 AD, an epic poem by Roman poet Statius, 45 until 96 AD, which describes Mithras in a cave, wrestling with something that has horns, in the format of a prayer to the god Phoebus, Apollo, or Helios. Part of the Paris Greek magical papyrus, the Mithras liturgy, dates to between 100 and the 300s AD. In Book 4 of the Greek magical papyri, in which the Mithras liturgy occurs, lines 1 through 25 are a spell calling on Egyptian and Hebrew powers in order to obtain information. Lines 1127 through 1164 are a spell for exercising a demon using Coptic words with instructions for preparing an amulet and lines 1716 through 1870 are headed Sword of Dardanos, which is a love spell. Although contested and debatable, this Mithras liturgy does correspond in its number of phases with the number of grades known to have been practiced in the Fraternal Secret Society 
devoted to Mithras, centered in Rome, Italy, around the same era. Lines 751 through 834 are instructions on how to enact the liturgy. The practitioner is warned not to misuse the mysterion, lines 724 through 834, and is given instructions on the preparation of magical accoutrements, a sun scarab ointment, 751 to 778, the herb contritis, 778 until 792, and the protective phylacteries for the ritual, 813 through 819. Initiates of the Roman Mithras fraternity called themselves syndexioi, those united by the handshake. In the Suda, a 10th century AD Byzantine encyclopedia of the ancient Mediterranean world, formerly attributed to an author called Sudas, under the entry Mithras, it states that no one was permitted to be initiated into these rites until he should show himself holy and steadfast by undergoing several graduated tests. Sol and Mithras were portrayed in rituals by the two most senior officers in the cult's hierarchy, the Pater and the Heliodromus. There were seven grades of initiation into Mithraism listed by St. Jerome. These seven grades of the fraternity of Mithras were as follows. 1. Corvex, Crow, Mercury. The initiate is led into a location where a pater would be seated in the guise of Mithras with a drawn bow. Accompanying the initiate is a mystagogue, who explains the symbolism and theology to the initiate. The rite is thought to enact what has come to be called the water miracle, in which Mithras fires a bolt into a rock, and from the rock there spouts water. The soul's encounter with the four elements is rehearsed as both generation and regeneration. In lines 485 through 537. Phase, birth from a rock. Symbols, beaker, caduceus. Two, nymphus. Bridegroom, Venus. At this level, lines 537 through 585, the revelation seeker is supposed to breathe deeply and feel himself lifted up as if in mid air, hearing and seeing nothing of mortal beings on earth. He is promised to see instead the divine order of the visible gods, rising and setting. Ritual silence is prescribed, followed by another sequence of hissing, popping, and thirteen magic words. Then you will see the gods looking graciously upon you, and no longer rushing at you, but rather going about in their own order of affairs. After a shocking crash of thunder, another admonition of silence, and a magic incantation, the disk of the sun is to open and issue five-pointed stars. Phase, striking water from stone with an arrow shot. Symbols, lamp, handbell, veil, circlet, or diadem. 3. 
Meles, Soldier, Mars. The eyes are to be closed for the following prayer. In this prayer, lines 585 through 628, the speaker again names himself and his mother, followed by an extensive list of translatable epithets such as light maker and fire driver, interspersed with magic names. These are planetary guardians of the gates of heaven. Among the invocations are Aeon and Yayo, an extensive series of vowels are pronounced with fire and spirit. After thunder and a feeling of physical agitation, another series of magic words elicits a vision of Helios. Phase, the killing of the bull, called the Toroctony. Symbols, pouch, helmet, lance, drum, belt, breastplate. 4. Leo, Lion, Jupiter. The procession of the Sun Runner ritual has the Heliodromus, escorted by two figures representing Countess and Countapates, twin shepherds and preceded by an initiate of the Miles grade, leading a ritual enactment of the solar journey around the Mithraeum Hall, which was intended to represent the cosmos. Helios is described as a youthful god, beautiful in appearance, with fiery hair, and in a white tunic with a scarlet cloak, and wearing a fiery crown. He is to be given the fire greeting, lines 628 through 657, and asked for protection while kissing phylacteries. Phase, soul's submission to Mithras. Symbols, batellum, iron shovel, sistrum, metal, musical, percussive instrument, laurel wreath, thunderbolts. 5. Perses, Persian, Luna. The celestial doors are thrown open to reveal seven virgins dressed in linen and with faces of asps an element identified as Egyptian. They carry golden wands and are to be hailed individually. Lines 657 through 672. Phase, Mithras and Soul feasting on the bull. Symbols, hooked sword, harpy, Phrygian cap, sickle, Crescent moon, stars, sling, pouch. 6. Heliodromus, sun runner, Saul. Next to come forth are the seven pole lords, wearing linen loincloths and with faces of bulls. They have seven gold diadems and are also to be hailed individually by name. These have powers of thunder, lightning, and earthquakes, as well as the capacity to grant physical health, good eyesight and hearing, and calmness. Lines 673 through 692. The two groups of seven female and male, are both depicted in an Egyptian manner and represent the region of the fixed stars. Phase, the ascent of Mithras to heaven in a chariot. Symbols, 
torch, images of the sun god Helios, whip, robes. 7. Pater, Father, Saturn. In the midst of lightning and tremors of the earth, the highest god appears, youthful and bright in appearance, wearing a white tunic, a golden crown, and trousers. He holds the shoulder of a bull in what seems to be an astronomical reference to the constellation Perseus, lines 696 through 724. His eyes project lightning bolts, and stars issue from his body. The instructions are to make a long bellowed sound, straining your belly, that you may excite the five senses. Bellow long until out of breath, and again kiss the phylacteries. Symbols Patera, a libation bowl. Mitre, shepherd's staff, garnet or ruby ring, cowcible or cape, elaborate robes, jewel encrusted with metallic threads. The common Mithraeum was either an adapted natural cavern or a subterranean building imitating a cave. There is usually a narthex, or antechamber, at the entrance, and often other ancillary rooms for storage and the preparation of food. The site of a Mithraeum may also be identified by its singular entrance or vestibule, which stands opposite from an apse-shaped wall in which a pedestal altar at the back stood often in a recess. Its primary cave hall, called the Spelaeum or Spelunca, had raised benches along the side walls for the ritual meal. It has been estimated that there were likely at least 680 Mithraea in the city of Rome alone. The earliest datable Mithraeum outside Rome was from 148 AD. Considerable numbers were found in Ostia, Numidia, Dalmatia, Britain, and along the Rhine-Danube frontier, but were less common in Greece, Egypt, and Syria. The Mithraeum at Caesarea Maritima is the only one now known of to have been located in Palestine. As rapidly as its rise to prominence in the second half of the 100s AD, by 500 AD, Mithraism had surpassed its zenith and membership dwindled to effectively zero. Several factors were involved in both this steep rise and sudden fall. Just as a coronated king calling Emperor Nero Mithras in 66 AD drew clout and positive notoriety to the movement initially, the actual participation in their ceremonies by the later Emperor Commodus 161 through 192 AD would focus just as much shame and negative attention on them. The initiate into each grade appears to have been required to undertake a specific ordeal or test, some involving exposure, others threat of peril. An ordeal pit, dating to the early 200s AD, has been identified in the Mithraeum at Caroburg, a settlement in Northumberland near Hadrian's Wall. Finally, the potential for scandal broke out with accounts of the cruelty of the Emperor Commodus, describing his amusing himself by enacting Mithraic initiation ordeals in torturous, homicidal form. By the later 200s, the enacted trials appear to have 
abated in rigor as ordeal pits began being floored over. Likewise, just as being a new and syncretic cult attracted members at first, particularly from the poverty-stricken Roman legions, eventually newer, wealthier members, such as Roman senators during the 300s A.D. pagan revival, wanted to buy rank, and honorary pater status may have been awarded by many Mithraea at the cult's peak thus making the group less appealing to older, poorer, legionnaire members. The penultimate setback came when, on December 25th, 274 A.D., the Roman Emperor Aurelian made Sol Invictus, Unconquered Son, the patron of soldiers, an official cult alongside the traditional Roman Flamines. Aurelian also dedicated a new temple for Sol that day, thus bringing the total number of temples for the god in Rome to at least four. As it was, the Roman cult of Sol had existed in Rome since the early Republic, but the cult of Mithras had only been successful for two centuries by 300 A.D. With membership in decline, the public image of the cult sullied, and unable to grow out of the shadow of older, more successful cults, the final nail in the coffin for Roman Mithraism came with the anti-pagan decrees of the Christian Emperor Theodosius, 347 until 395 A.D., during the last decade of the 300s. Mithraists everywhere were, at least on paper, suddenly dubbed illegal dissidents, and an annual free meal ceased being worth risking imprisonment, injury, or death for. By 400 A.D., Mithraism was no more.